Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be walking through Cisco Packet Tracer 10.3.1.2. This is a skills integration challenge. Um, really it's kind of a combination of a lot of the skills that we've been building up. So we're going to be configuring VLANs, trunks, um, DHCP via the Cisco router, and we're going to configure that router also as a DHCP client on this side. Um, the instructions do mention that you're going to set up a DHCP relay agent. I don't think we're going to be doing that in this activity because we don't have any other routers that are going to be acting as our relays. But we will be doing a little bit of everything else. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to first create our VLANs on switch 2. So let's get the command line interface and make this bigger so everybody can see it. And then we want to get up to the global configuration mode. And we're just going to be using our VLAN information table here to kind of create our VLANs and name them. Start with VLAN 10, give it the name Sales. Go to VLAN 20 and just continue on. Alright, once we have that all set up, we then need to assign the correct interfaces or the correct ports to these VLANs. We can do that instead of individually, we can do them as ranges for each VLAN, like so. And then we just need to give the switch port access VLAN and then whichever VLAN it belongs to. Then we can go over to the next range. 6, that should be 10 through 14, and that's going to be part of VLAN 20, 15 through 19 are going to be part of VLAN 30, and then 20 through 24 will be part of VLAN 40. All right. Next, we need to configure our ports here for trunking. And it's going to be all four ports out here. Two of these ports are connected to switch 3. One port is connected to switch 1. And one port is connected to router 1. So we need to set all four of these up for trunking. So we're going to continue making use of that interface range command. It's going to be F01 through 4. And we give the command switch port mode trunk and no shut just to be on the safe side. Alright, so we have that set up. We need to configure all of our non-trunking ports as access ports. And we can do that with another range command. 5 through 24 should be switch port mode access. Although they should, they're probably already configured for such. Uh, I guess not because it did give us some more completion right there. Alright, and then we're done here for now. Next we want to go into router 1, and we need to create sub-interfaces, and the sub-interface names should match the VLAN numbers. Um, that's all... There we are, up here. So interface sub-interface point 10 is going to match VLAN 10, sub-interface point 20 will match VLAN 20, so on and so forth. So we get to the global configuration mode, and we'll just start with 10. And then assign an IP address with a subnet mask. So I'm pulling that information from right here. We want to go over and do the same thing for our other sub-interfaces for each VLAN. 20 with an IP address. 3120.1. And our third sub-interface. Last 
test VLAN subinterface with my IP address. Except that that should be 40.1. There we go. Just to make sure it didn't take that IP address, we'll make sure it removed it. And let's just clear it all and we'll put the correct IP address back in. There we go. And then we want to come to G00 which is where we've been configuring our sub-interfaces. We're going to give this interface a no-shut command to bring all the sub-interfaces online as well. Alright, so that takes care of the inter-VLAN side. Next, we want to configure this router to act as a DHCP server. Um, the criteria are that each pool, um, each VLAN will have a pool, and the pool name will match the VLAN name. Um, each pool will have the appropriate addresses assigned. Um, each pool will also assign a default gateway address when it assigns an IP address. It will also assign a DNS server address for each device to use when it's assigned a DHCP address. And the final thing is that we want to prevent the first 10 addresses from each pool from being distributed to end devices, so we want to exclude the first 10 IP addresses from each range. I'm going to do this a little bit from the bottom first, and I'm going to exclude my first 10 for each network first. I'm going to come back. There we go. Alright, so there's for VLAN 1. You can come and just do a quick change here for VLAN 2. 20, VLAN 30, and VLAN 40. Alright, so there's the first portion of that, excluding those first 10 IP addresses. Next, we want to actually create the DHCP pools. So our first is going to be for VLAN 10. The network and a subnet mask. And I'm using this information to create the subnet mask. If you don't want to go through converting these over to a numerical subnet mask, just remember that we've already used that subnet mask up here. So VLAN 10, subinterface 10 with the subnet mask, so that subnet mask will match all of VLAN 10. So you, these will correspond appropriately, so you can just use those instead of going through all the work of changing those yourself. We want to set a default router, which will be our sub-interface IP address for each VLAN. I'm going to set a DNS server, and this will be the same across all four VLANs. And so that's our first VLAN, VLAN 10. <coughs> Next, we want to go ahead and set up the DHCP pool for VLAN 20, 30, and 40. I'm just going to run through these quickly so you can follow or you can pause whenever you need and configure your router.
Alright, so those have been set up. The next thing we want to check is that each PC should be assigned a DHCP address. So we can close our router for the moment, and we just want to come into each PC, go to the desktop IP configuration, and tell it to request an IP address from DHCP. We we'll do the same for all four PCs. So that looks good. The next thing we want to do is configure R1 as a DHCP client so that it receives an IP address from the Internet Service Provider Network. That sounds really complicated, but it's pretty easy. We want to go into that interface, which was G01. We want to give the IP address DHCP command. And give it a no shut command. And this DHCP was fairly quick, the local to the PCs. Um, the router DHCP coming over to the ISP might take a little bit more time. Let me see if I can get this in here. Give it an end. Show IP interface G01. showing that it is up. Let's go fast forward time a little bit. And there we are. It has now been assigned this IP address. And we can run that command again see that it has that address, subnet, broadcast address, all assigned by DHCP. So if you go through and you give it that last command up here to give it DHCP capabilities, and you're sitting at 97% for a little while, just hit fast forward time three or four times, fast forward it a few minutes, and then it will, because it takes some time to contact the ISP for that and to receive a response from the ISP for that DHCP address, um, so that'll get you back up to 100% completion where you should be. Just keep in mind in the real world, sometimes this can take 24 hours and maybe a phone call to the ISP. Um, so at this point, we should be fully configured, everything should be able to ping all the other devices, as well as the Cisco.pka. Um, we can go ahead and test that here. And these first ones might fail because I'm not doing a full ping command. And so it has to build the routing tables. And we're still seeing some failure. So let's hop over into the simulation mode and take a look at what's going on. I'm going to start from my router. works. Next, I want to try to go from PC4. There we go. We should be successful now. So it looks like it was just because I needed to go from my router itself. To build the routing table through the ISP first. Now all of our devices should be able to connect. There we go. PC1 and 2 are good, PC3 is good, and PC4 is good. In addition to that, they should all be able to ping each other. good. And last 
mostly 3 and 4. Alright, so we have full connectivity. We do see some orange light showing that s uh, switch 1 and switch 3 might not be configured properly, but we still have this route from switch 2 through switch 1 to get to the router. So in a real network, you would want to troubleshoot these and see what exactly is going on with these connections. But we have completed everything required to get minimum connectivity going. And so I'm going to go ahead and call that good for this packet tracer activity. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them for me below. And I hope to see you all in my next video.